Hey, hello, my friends. Hope everybody is well today, I guess, tonight. Uh, getting to you a little late tonight with a uh, what I sold on eBay video. Again, I'm Paul Apollonia. Been selling on eBay, again, feels like forever, 20 plus years. Took it seriously, probably about 18 years ago. Got introduced to consignment via a friend of mine, and I'm still doing consignment for now and then. He had stuff to sell. I was working a ridiculous part-time job at a big box store at night, and he said, you can make more money on eBay than you can at that job. And I went, eh, eh, for about three or four months, and I decided to sell on eBay, and that's where it started. Uh, I do a lot of consignment. Consignment's great. It's not for everybody. Got to deal with a lot of people, uh, dealing with people that are, I wouldn't say down on their luck, but dealing with a lot of things with their family. Maybe someone passed away. Um, they have to downsize. They don't want to downsize. Uh, sometimes they may have to leave a place they don't want to leave for many reasons. Um, it's good. A lot of attachment issues sometimes with people, but uh, I like it. A lot of upfront work. But uh, again, I think everything you do in the reselling world involves work at some stage of the game. You want to go thrifting, the time's to out there thrifting. Consignment, upfront time. Garage selling, whatever. Um, I also have a uh, parting out dishwasher course, making money parting out dishwashers on my teachable site. All those links are down below. And I also run the Raleigh eBay Ecom Meetup Group. We meet second Thursday of the month at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 to 5. And it's a Zoom format meeting online. Uh, I do in-persons every once in a while. But the challenge is I'm getting more and more people via Zoom than I am the in-persons. Love in-persons, but... Zoom is uh, kind of where it's going in the future from the uh, pandemic, which is fine with me. What else can I tell you? I forget. Oh, one thing before I forget, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for everyone who subscribed. 1237.35 last time I checked. Thank you so much. Everyone subscribe. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging in there. I love everyone, you guys and gals. And please like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Don't forget, after you subscribe, hover over that hover over that subscribe button and click the all. Then you will get all my videos I am producing. Do a lot of eBay, a lot of uh, do-it-yourself videos, some Chromebook videos, and just some other miscellaneous videos, but mainly eBay and other online venues. I also use a program called List Perfectly, which basically you put things in List Perfectly and it propels your listings out to other platforms like Macari, Etsy, and a ton of other ones. There's a link down below also for that for your discount for the first month. What else? I think that's about it. I'm going to show you about five items I sold. Hopefully, I'll try and make this quick. And I say this every time, and I'm sorry, but I want to give some value to these videos for you guys since you're taking time out of your day to watch them. I'm going to try and tell you where I got it from, <laughs> what I made, and some tips and tricks. Okay, so let's uh, get this going here. I saw a bunch of different things. I saw a little bit of everything. Um, I, I kind of specialize in old uh, audio equipment and uh, appliance parts. I get my uh, appliances from Craigslist and Facebook, usually for free. And there's a, uh, a video out there on my channel that I show you how what I do and how I get uh, uh, Craigslist alerts uh, sent to my email whenever something is available. Dishwashers, washers, dryers, uh, whatever you want to look for. All right. Uh, here is an item. Let me shrink this down. Like I say, you don't want to see my ugly mug that big. <clears throat> like I said, I saw anything and everything. Tell everybody what you are doing. I have made three, two to three videos on this. You'll be amazed at what people give you. Uh, whatever. Um, this item I actually found. I uh, got a part-time job. A, uh, I'm an education technical coordinator at a uh, local charter school. I'm responsible for 800 Chromebooks. I love it. It's very flexible. I love Chromebooks. I'm 100% Chromebook. Not for everybody, but I love it. So uh, that's what my part-time gig is. Very flexible with what I'm trying to do. And it's a school, and every once in a while they say, hey, we got a whole pile of books in the break room. If anybody wants them, whatever, please take them. 
This was sitting there forever. Obviously, nobody wanted it. I didn't grab it for resale the first day. I, I, I don't want to do that. I want to make sure the teachers get what they need for the kids. <clears throat> and there you go. $24 got it for nothing. Um, some kind of game. Um, it looked like it was never opened. <laughs> so I put it as new. <laughs> sold it. Person was happy with it, obviously. I sold it a while ago. Um, with shipping, uh, my shipping, I picked economy shipping because that leaves me open to all options on eBay. Post Office, FedEx, and UPS. And this was probably going to go uh, USPS, Post Office, Ground which is becoming very affordable compared to all the other shipping options. So I'm either shipping things out first class, post office ground, or uh, UPS. I do use FedEx, but those FedEx is usually in the end. <clears throat> it's kind of weird. Those are the two, three options I usually ship at. My title is um, <clears throat> eBay um, best practices. Try not to use any special characters. Yes, you're going to see listings out there that sold with lots of special characters in. We're going to go, Paul, how'd that stuff sell? I don't know. I'm just following eBay's best practices to say don't use any special characters, no at signs. I try not to use any special characters, even dashes at times, but you will see dashes in there at times. Um, should be uh, pertinent to your uh, item you're selling. I just basically it's a copy and paste of the uh, name of the game. I did the number 10. And I also spelled out 10. Um, I found, I, I was training a guy, I also do a lot of eBay training, long time ago in my, in my meetup group, years and years ago, he was selling coins. And he would have like, whatever, 25 cent piece, you know, 0.25. And I thought, well, why don't you just, you got room in your title, put 25 cents in there. We did that and his sales seemed to go up. So I don't know if that's coincidence or whatever, but I try and spell out the number when I can if I have the room. Uh, what if my shipping is lower than what I'm charging? Do I refund the buyer? No, I do not. I rarely ever refund. What if it's higher? Then I eat it. Uh, eons ago, <laughs> if it was really, really high, I would message the buyer and say, hey, the shipping is really high. And that was a long time ago. I don't know why I was doing it. When that is totally on me, I made a mistake. And sometimes they'd give you money and sometimes they wouldn't, but that's kind of tacky. All photos are done on my smartphone, Samsung S22, I think it is. Kind of old, still working. Hope it keeps on working for a while. And I try and take all kinds of angles of the uh, item. Obviously, I did not open it up. I just showed it. It was still sealed. <clears throat> my um, When I'm not selling anything new, which I'll show you in another listing, I always use a condition description. And it's basically my description itself. We'll get to the ice specifics in a second. It is short and sweet. Where is the description at? Okay. Well, it's in there. Oh, here it is right here. Very, and really nothing. I usually have my little disclaimer line saying, um, you know, please review all pictures and whatever. Any questions, please contact seller or whatever. All this information was pulled from eBay. I do sell similars. Be careful with sell similars when you're doing that. Don't assume that the person you're doing, the sell one like or whatever that button's called, they change all the time, is using everything correctly. Always review the item specifics. Item specifics are very, 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 very important. I can't stress taking the time to do item specifics. Excuse me. All this information is used on your left-hand side. When you're going to eBay and you're searching for items, new, used, um, color, whatever, don't put, now I'm going to make sure I don't call myself a liar. Nope. Make sure you're not using NA or none or just, if it, if, if it doesn't pertain to your items, just leave it blank. But these were all pulled in from the uh, self similar. <clears throat> Sold this in about a week. I probably made 24 maybe $22 on this for something I got for free. Now I'm also changing my business model because we're trying to downsize and I don't know what we're going to do as far as staying here and moving to another house, whatever. I used to sell anything and everything. If I could get $2 for this Sharpie, I would list it and sell it. If I knew it was a quick ship, 
quick sale, quick ship. Sometimes not even a quick sale is for the quick ship. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with doing that. I have nothing against people doing that. I did it for a long time. But I need to up my game a little bit. I need to shrink my inventory down to where I'm actually making more money on my inventory than I am now. But I'm really going to start maybe doing maybe at least minimum of ten dollars um, a transaction. I really like to do a minimum of twenty, but we'll start with ten. Uh, next item here is I am a ham radio operator N3 GCA amateur radio operator, not very active, and I go to these things called ham fests. Ham fests are basically big flea markets with a bunch of guys and gals selling ham radio stuff. It's gotten expanded to other people selling other stuff. Um, nothing like to smell old radios. I go with the sole purpose of flipping things on eBay. Um, I don't wear any garb. I don't wear any eBay hat or any eBay jackets or anything. Don't pass out cards or anything. Most people know what I'm doing. They don't care. They usually just give me stuff because, again, um, got to tell everybody what you're doing. First thing I do when I go to these ham fests is I look at the free boxes. Tons of free stuff given away, and I scour all through that. Then I look around, and I see, and I saw this Zenith Transoceanic Wave Radio. Um, these do sell. The prices fluctuate all over the place. I honestly, I think I got it for $20. I, I, I think that was what I got it for. Um I, I said, honestly, I cannot remember what I got it for, but I think it was around $20. It does work. Uh, rarely do you get one of these that actually works. Usually there's something wrong with the tubes are bad or whatever, but it does work. Um, and I'll show you the video I did here. All pictures again, white background. Um, the jury's out on white backgrounds anymore. Now they're saying it doesn't matter. Before it was the first picture had to be white background because Google shopping like, like white background. Don't forget every day, eBay uploads all their listings to Google shopping. So make sure that's where the special characters you don't want to use because sometimes Google shopping will, will read this. Okay, I'm ready to load the next one. Oh, I see a special character. Let me kick it out. That's supposedly what was happening before. I don't know what's going on now, but you, they're saying you don't need to use white backgrounds, but I, I just use a white background. These are project boards from Five Quarter Tree. You see, we call Dollar Tree, but I call it Five Quarter Tree because everything is like a dollar and a quarter and more. All, like I said, all photos are done. I'm pretty crazy with photos, and I'll show you the video in a minute. I want to make sure the person sees everything um, that's here, the case. Uh, I did clean the case up. I used a mild cleaner, just a, just a mild um, car cleaner. I used to do auto detailing, and then I used a vinyl uh, protectant on the uh, on the case, and it came out pretty good. Make sure you show all corners. Um, that antenna is very important to have. That's the AM antenna. It's a, lot, a lot of people are looking for that. Underneath, always always show. Let me see if I can get this to go here. When you're selling electronics of any type, always show the underneath, even if it's rusted, um, show it. Because people want to know that it doesn't have water damage. And if it does, make sure you state that in your listing. And also, if you're going to sell something, parts, uh, here, I'll get it in a minute. And this is the inside of it. Like I said, I'm pretty crazy with the pictures. There is a tube there, but I did not include that. Technically, I should have retaken the picture because I did not include that tube. And if you look over here, there's a battery. And the batteries are, if they're not damaged, and this one was a little damaged, I did take the battery out. Some of the some of the old battery receivers are not working. Uh, they're worth a good penny because people are using them for restoration and to, to the look at a radio. Close above the tubies, and there's an information thing in there. I could have got more information on the radio, but I did not. Uh, the inside of it, what else, model, any, any kind of serial number, any kind of numbers I try and take a picture of. Okay, so here is the video. Very quick video, done on my phone.
Always important to state when you have it, when you have a, uh, do I have a picture of the antenna? No, I don't. Uh oh, but I did say it was straight. Uh, the first picture here, as you can see, you can see the antenna is straight, but it is straight. I made sure it was straight. That's very, very important. If it is bent, show a picture of it being bent. Just be honest with your listing. If you are selling something for parts or not working, whatever that condition is, and you know it's not working, but it powers on, do not show it powered on. People will assume it is working at times. So when I'm selling something, parts not working, and I know it doesn't power, or I know it's not working, but it does power on, I do not show it powered on. If I do show it powered on, I make it very clear. Please read. Um, even the condition description right here, please read. It does work. Here, let's go down here. It's bigger. This is the same thing in my, in my description. I copy and paste it. So here, let's read the description instead. It does work. The tuning needle does not, dial did not, does not work. And usually you put some wax on the string and, and usually that makes it work. Maybe loose. I don't know. Watch the video. Oh, I'm able to get some AM stations. It will did, boy, that's my screen English. It will did work. <laughs> oh, brother. It will did work and cleaning and maybe... A restored. Okay. Uh, whatever I was trying to say there. Hey, we all make mistakes. Uh, great grammar there, Paul. Um, it will be packed with care. A lot of times when you're shipping these things, you, you, you'll get a response, a message back from the buyer saying, please pack it with care. Just use common sense. Pack it the way you'd want to receive it. I use a lot of bubble wrap. I get my bubble wrap for free from the furniture store dumpster or phone from the same dumpster. Pros and cons about getting stuff for free like that. You have to go get it. You have to go split it up. You got to put it in boxes. That's your time. Rather than going to buying rolls of a bubble wrap that are divided evenly into what, 12, 15, 12 16 inch pieces and boxes that are uh, labeled with sizes, there are pros and cons to uh, getting free stuff and buying stuff. Please, there we go. Please review photos, item descriptions, and any questions. So that was a good sale. I'm thinking I got this for $20. I honestly, I cannot remember. Not a great earner. Probably should have charged more for it. That's what about what they were going for. In the past, I've gotten well over $100 for these things not working. Times are changing, I guess. But uh, I was uh, happy with that sale. Uh, I, years ago, <clears throat> there's a problem with consignment. Years and years ago, I knew a pastor, <laughs> and he was moving out of his house into a smaller house, and he had a whole library of pastoral, pastoral, pastoral books, but ministry books, whatever. Um, I honestly, I got rid of ninety-five percent of them just uh, three weeks ago in the garage. Been holding on them for years. I just never got them listed. I was originally going to put them on Amazon. And I was playing with Amazon for a couple of years, and then I just dropped Amazon. Amazon, if Amazon works for you, that's wonderful. It's just not my. This is not my thing. Um, a lot of hoops you got to jump through, and returns are pretty bad sometimes on there. But I pulled out probably twenty books, and I've sold a good bit of these different types of books. Twenty two ninety nine. I think I gave the guy. We were doing a consignment deal, and after about a year, he asked me, so what's going on with the books? Should have just given them back to him. Probably should have even taken this on. Sometimes that happens too. My heart is too good, and I don't listen to my gut. Um, I gave like 75 bucks for all the books. He was happy. Um, so I, I, I did pretty good. I sold other books too, and I think you'll see in, 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 in the future videos. 22 bucks. Plus, uh, oh, I did free shipping on that. Um, at this point, the books, $75 is, is, is water under the bridge. It, it, it's fine. Um, so I don't do free shipping too often, but I think, well, what I do normally is when I see solds that have a lot of free shipping in them, I'll do free shipping. I think I made, it went out media mail because it is a book. 
Um, careful with media mail. Don't try and trick them out because they do look. Uh, sometimes the post office does look at things. All different angles of the book. Make sure when you're now I'm not a book aficionado. I'm not a huge book seller, but I did get some education from my old bookstore owner that, that sold old antique like books. And he said, always show the sides. I forget what they call the sides and what the brown is called when it's wearing out. And I show the, 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 uh, ah, the page where the copyright and all the other information is. And that's about it. Nothing crazy. Done on my phone, white background, project board in the garage while I was going through all the books. Didn't make a lot of money on this. Probably made $14. Probably should have just given this to the thrift store like I was doing all the other books. But I pulled it out. And I thought, well, make a little bit of money. Why not? Uh, this is an item I got from another, I used to do small engine repair, used to do very well doing small engine repair, then the markets changed, uh, China parts, throwaway society, it just wasn't worth it anymore, so I moved that business over to parting out of lawnmowers and outdoor equipment. Did very well with that for about three or four years, like really, really well with that, and then with all the influx of the China uh, import uh, new parts, the money wasn't there anymore. Um, stuff's dropping like crazy. I've got four echo blowers that this gentleman gave me with a bunch of other junk that I honestly, well, I made money off of his stuff, but I probably shouldn't have taken most of it. I just felt sorry for the poor guy. Again, good heart. Got this to my gut. Um, those recoils on those uh, echo blowers used to go for about $20, $25 used. I'll be lucky to get $9, $9.99, $12.99 plus shipping for each one. But I'm going to take them off anyway, and I'm going to take the, uh, the tubes off and sell the tubes and throw it away, uh, put the rest in the uh, recycle dump. This item here, I took a big loss on because I just want to get rid of it. It was a big item. I think I sold it for, or I know I sold it for, believe it or not, $20. Yeah, I could have parted it out. I could have made probably more than $69 parting it out. Could have sold uh, that piece, the recoil, uh, the bar, um, and all the miscellaneous stuff. Uh, the handle here, the, the gas caps, uh, this bar here. I've, I've, I've parted out chainsaws before the engine itself. Um, for parts not working, it probably does work, but I just needed a tune-up or a carburetor replacement. Um, I think I made, I'll be honest with you, we were shipping and everything. I probably walked away with about $22. Not a great sale because it takes me a while to pack. Well, not a while. I take the blade off, the, blade, the bar off, because I'm not going to ship it in a big, long box. I take the bar off to where are those bolts at? Where are they at? I'm trying to show you. There they are. Those bolts right there, nuts, bolts, nuts. They're half-inch bolts. They come right off, and then this cover. Ay, ay, ay. This cover comes off. You just slide the uh, the bar off. Be careful with the chain. Sometimes the chain gets a little tangled in the, or stuck in the bar, and I put the bar in the box. I put the chains on the box with packing material, some bubble wrap. Not, I don't go too crazy packing these things because it's a chainsaw. Like the odds of it getting damaged is going to be pretty rare since I'm using a heavy duty small um, Lowe's or Home Depot box, costing about two bucks. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I really shouldn't have sold it for twenty dollars, but I'm glad it's out of here because it was taking up room on my shelf. So, excuse me, the last item, oh no, not the precious moments again. Yes, hello, I'm sure you heard this before. I make friends with everybody you know that's in your same business, other resellers. <laughs> excuse me, if you're doing consignment, other consigners, they want to be friends with you, at least be business colleagues with them, because you can swap business back and forth. Uh, this guy here, Trader Chris, he's out of, he was in Pittsburgh, and he was in Apex, I forget where he's living at now. But um, he's a local guy, he comes in to meet up sometimes, great guy. He sends me his stuff that I would say he doesn't want. He specializes in very high-end estate jewelry and different other state stuff. 
that I have no desire to deal with, to be honest with you. So he sends me some of his other customers. He called me up last year, last June, and said, I have 250 precious moment figurines. Do you want them? Mm. I said, yes. I went over there, spent probably about an hour, probably about a half an hour wait, spent probably about an hour, hour and change, packing them all up in the containers. Did I make money off of all these? Yes, I did. Did I make thousands of dollars off of these? No, I did not. I made probably about four, $450, $500 off of these, but it were, they were slow tails, long tail sales, which means they were slow sales. Um, it seemed like no matter how I packed them in shipping and I packed them with bubble wrap and foam. When I was selling more than one, I was selling them in groups of nine. Why nine? Because I wanted to be an odd number instead of 10. Um, and I was selling groups of nine for $20, $30. And sometimes if you would get broken, I'd have to refund the person. I would just take nine divided by the price I was charging. Um, would I do it again? No. Um, I sold this and two other ones, and then I gave the rest of the thrift store. There's probably about, out of 250, probably about 20, 25 left. I, I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. They were taking up a lot of room. I wanted $69.99 for this. I looked it up. That's what it was going for on eBay and other sites. It took me a while to sell this. Um, I got a lot of lowball offers. I had a person in China constantly sending me offers for $20, $20, $20. Um, I always respond uh, to an offer. Uh, I used to be for best offers and I was against best offers for years and years and years. Now I'm back on board with the best offers. Great way to bring in sales. Um, you'll get a lot of lowball offers. Don't get upset with it. Just either just always reply to an offer. Um, it actually bumps your listing up in search because then you get some activity on your listing. This guy would would send me $20 offers. And I'd say no. And I'd go 20% lower than what I was asking. 20, 25% lower. $20, $20. Every couple of weeks, same thing. $20, $20. Finally, I sold it for four, uh, for. $54, I sold it for $53, $54. Plus shipping, uh, shipping went out. It was $7 for shipping, so I did very well on this. Again, I got to listen to my gut. I made money on these, but it was it was very time consuming, and it took up a lot of room in my inventory. It took up three or four shelves on my in my inventory. So that is about it, my friends. I want to thank you so much for watching. And again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Check out my other videos. Um, eBay's been good to me. I like eBay. Um, I always seem to come back to it, even while using lists perfectly. I'm out there on other platforms at the time, but I always seem to migrate back to eBay because it's just been a platform that works for me for what I'm selling, especially with used parts. It seems to be the best uh, platform. Okay, my friends, you have a, a great uh, day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Steve with Rake and Prop and I'm here with Paul and I just want to shoot a quick testimonial for him because he's been one of my good friends for over what, four or five years yeah. now? Yeah. And if you're looking to learn about selling on eBay and you want to start a side hustle or you just want to make some money flipping stuff on eBay, you're in great hands. Paul's been doing this for a long time. He's helped a ton of people and I put my full faith and trust in him. So Paul, I appreciate you. You bet. Thank you so much. You got it.